Hello there and welcome to the new channel. Here to help you see the new you. My name is Carmine Ortega. Dennis Calamba. This is Natog Bayani. My name is Juan Lu. I'm Chino. I'm Trisha. This is Apple Manansada. This is attorney Carlo Ibanez. This is attorney Sheila Sindiaga. This is Angie. This is Argamid. My name is Dante Salamba. This is Jesse Francis Repostillo. I'm Dania Cunha. Mon Mendoza. I am Mappet Erhina. I'm Leo Bryan. Mike. Nice to be here. Sir Al Ian Barcelona. This is Marvin Salazar. This is Sunny Haldons. Heidi Lumainos. This is Ivan Jude. Patrick Hieronimo. Alan Perez. My name is Erwin Ursua. Mine is Bob. My name is Lloyd Luna and this is Future. The Paul. This happened. Family Business. The Puppet Stories. After Shift. PNC Town Hall. Yolo. Marketplace. The Home Buyer. HR Hotline. Danny Art Show. Healthline. Foreign Affairs. COVID Stories. Awesome Day Show. Thank you. Money and More. Cybernet. Women at Work. Win with for project the big picture sometimes life lets you down and you feel that you are done you just want to mourn and run because the fun is so gone but sometimes life makes you proud when you look far and wide when you leave the pain behind See the brighter side TMC gives you inspiration TMC reignites your passion TMC starts your transformation TMC helps you see the new Something bad You just wanna cry and hide And save your face from the crowd But sometimes life makes you see The beauty in you and me When you look up above There is God and there is love TNC gives you inspiration TNC reunites your passion Transformation TNC Helps you see the new We're here to help you see The newness of life We're here to help you feel Your hope is your real You've got the power to see We'll help you see The new you TNC Gives you inspiration The new channel. Hello there and welcome to the new channel. We are here to help you see the new you. My name is Lloyd Luna and this is The Big Picture. Yes.
Hello there, Metro Manila, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, or wherever you're watching from around the world. Good evening to you all. It's another inspirational episode for tonight that we have in store for you. And if you're watching us live right now, please do share our live stream link. You can also organize your own watch party and share the same link to your friends, families, and associates. And you can also watch us on youtube.com slash TNC now. And if you're going to watch us on youtube.com slash TNC now and drop some comments in there, you can get an opportunity to get a gift courtesy of Unisol and TNC. And the item to get, please watch the clip. That's washable face mask worth 800 pesos courtesy of Unisol and TNC. So again, watch us on youtube.com slash TNC now and uh, get a chance to take that item. Ladies and gentlemen, it's always been um, an honor for me to be able to uh, interview people of different caliber. And tonight is no different. Uh, we are going to talk about something that is coming in very, very... Uh, soon kasi po March na kapag ka March hindi lang gumagraduate hindi lang graduation yung highlight ng ating calendar kapag ka March uh, because March is also women's month in fairness walang men's month but there is <laughs> women's month mamaya ay tatanungin natin sa ating guest kung bakit kaya ganon but uh, tonight we are going to have Spark Philippines in our show so Spark Philippines or Samahan ng mga Pilipina para sa Reforma at Kaunlaran is a non-profit organization that was established to primarily promote gender and development or yung tinatawag ng GAD or GAD and advance its philosophy through gender mainstreaming by not only integrating uh, gender issues into the mainstream but to transform the mainstream issues into being more receptive and conducive to God goals. Now, SPARK also aims to empower women and bring about gender equality through its projects and programs. Now, you said this March 2021, SPARK will be commemorating Women's Month through a four-part series, we discussed that tonight, of roundtable discussions on various issues affecting women. Now, through these discussions, uh, we aim to highlight that women's issues are a cross-cutting issues and to identify and implement necessary solutions to achieve genuine, genuine, genuine gender equality. So in the show is the Executive Director of Spark Philippines, Mike Teres. Good evening to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for coming to The Big Picture. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, po, kayo, mama? It's been a year. I don't know what happened to, to you, but to us, it's a total devastation. Uh, during 2020, what were the challenges? At kumusta kayo ngayong uh, first two months of the new year? Well, you know, 2020, like, like, like you, it was also a very sad year for me and also for the organization. Um, you know, we had so many plans. Uh, that were that 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 did not materialize um however at the end of the day you know we proved to be resilient na continue pa rin namin um lahat ng programs namin um although uh online um but so far the, the first two months of, of this new year of 2022 have been busy maraming programs and projects na, na, na implement namin and a lot more coming up for the year Wow, that's uh, interesting. You know why? Because uh, lahat tayo pare-parehas yung dinaanan talaga, eh, no? As in, pare-parehas yung dinaanan. Sige, ma'am. So, uh, coming off dito sa, sa taon na ito, this is also a year of opportunity for us. Tell us your journey, how you became involved muna dito sa uh, women empowerment na ito. Uh, because, syempre, may kanya-kanya tayong story. For sure, meron kayo. So, if you can just uh, tell us your story and your journey, how you came uh, to Spark, please let us know. Yes, well, um, it was by accident. It was really, really by accident. Um, 
I I'm a policy person. Um, I worked in in pub in uh, in public service, um, and I decided to take uh, to take up law and take the bar exams. And during that time that I that uh, while waiting for the results of the bar exam, I volunteered in a in a campaign, and there I met my um, my boss today. Um, you know, Lloyd. Um, Failing the I the reason why I got into women empowerment really is because of failure. In, in, in as much as you know, we don't want to share that. Um, I never thought I would fail the bar exams, and when I failed, uh, my boss at in the campaign, I remember her telling me, "Mike, allow the Holy Spirit to bring you to the right direction." And of course, at that time, I didn't. I thought nothing of it. But after the campaign, uh, she gave me a call and said, you know, uh, Micah, I want to offer you a job. And I asked her, what is it? And she said, it's an NGO. And um, I said, oh, I don't, I don't think I'm an NGO kind of person. And she said, um, I, think, I think you're the right person for it. I said, but what kind of NGO? And she said, it's in women empowerment. And I laughed and I told her, Miss Vicky, I, I don't even know what that is. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy that you offered me a job. But... No thanks. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what was the response when, when you said when you said no? Um, she said, "You know, I've seen the way you work. You're very passionate. Give it a chance." And you know, when when Vicky Garcia Rena offers you a job, you don't say no. You know, she's a pillar in the in the in civil society organizations. So I did, and um, this is a time when I was so depressed, failing. I I I wasn't used to failing. I planned my life all throughout. But it was in uh, working in communities that I realized that, you know, nawala, all my sadness just went away. Being with the women, seeing their struggles, their challenges every day. What, what must have uh, she has seen in you uh, that probably you have not seen in you uh, during the time when, what, first, in invite Kenya uh, to, to, uh, uh, to this group? Ano yung tingin mo nakita niya? Na parang at the time, parang you were laughing because parang hindi ka fit dun sa supposed to be NGO job. Well, I think she saw that the call time for the campaign was 8 o'clock in the morning. I would be there at 6.30. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes, I would I would be there 6.30 every morning. Um, I'd be the first there. And um, at the end of the day, uh, most people go home at 5. I would still stay on. And every time she would call me, uh, to to do things, Mas I I was really masipag in in doing whatever task you know there was to be uh, to be done. Um, you know I'm I'm an all or nothing kind of person. If I if I commit to something, that means I'm all in. Mm -hmm. That's uh, kind of I know I'm, I'm not I'm not judging it. I I also work for the government, but it's something that is kind of few nowadays. Uh, you're seeing few people doing that in the government, like you know. They, they come in time and they go home in time. So what what what's the the deal here? I mean, how did you come about that kind of discipline? Uh, you're always early and uh, you're hardworking. As far as your government's thing back then is concerned. Well, I think I owe my I, I think I owe my work ethic to my father. Uh, my father is was a, is a very hardworking man. He gets up. Uh, early every morning, you know, to work. And, you know, seeing that as, as an example, um, I did the same and I continue to do so. Mm -mm. Interesting din yun, dahil, uh, syempre, yung role model is very important para sa lahat. Sige. So when when you started, say, okay, uh, I'm, I'm getting the job. Uh, number one, I think what I would like to know is, ano yung naging feel mong difference noong government saka noong non-government? It's a kind of tough shift, you know, parang gano, from government to non-government organization. Um, well, well, yes, the two are very different. Um, you know, with what I think, what I like about non-government non work is that um, as the executive director, I'm able to decide. Um, I, I've now become a decision maker on creating our programs and projects, um, deciding which, which advocacies to take on. Um, and I'm able to really come in with confidence. And even if it's an unpopular, um, 
it's an unpopular side, but if I feel very strongly about it, I will fight for it. Um, unlike with, you know, with government work, we have to think, I have to think of my principal. Obviously, I, I have a boss and I have to think, of course, the repercussions that this this might, uh, you know, do for him. So that's that's the that's the difference. Oh, and dito pag uh, hinayar ka ni, uh, ni Mom Vicky, definitely my free hand ka dito. Yes, I'm very grateful. You know, um, I have a board of trustees who are very supportive. Many times they don't agree sa mga, they don't agree on my uh, uh, decisions. Uh, we we spar, so to speak, at, at uh, in, in board meetings. However, I, I I really like how I'm able to speak my mind, and you know, they really live um, up to the to to their to to their their. Uh, the organization, which is Women Empowerment, they've empowered, in the six years that I've been in Spark, I've never been more empowered by, you know, um, if you look at them, they're very high profile women, all very accomplished. And I think um, I'm just grateful that I get a front row seat at seeing them work and, you know, learn the best uh, lessons from them. Mm-hmm, sige. So, unti unti na natin ito. Uh, women Empowerment. Uh, how not empowered women uh, do we have in the Philippines now? I mean, that, kaya ba may women empowerment? Because in the Philippines, sobrang talamak yung women disempowerment? Uh, well, not really. You know, according to the according to the World Economic Forum, um, we're in the top 20 when it comes to women, uh, the women empowerment, you know, in the gender in in the index. Um, however, I, I, I have a different um, approach to that. I, I feel that the reason why we made it to the top 20 is because, um, you know, we've had two uh, female presidents, we've had several female senators, legislators, um, and we have some women in boardrooms. But the reality for me, especially our work at Spark, we're able to go to far-flung areas, we're able to go to, to the rural areas. And when you see the women uh, there... I feel that these are not covered in that gen- gender index. Many of them have seven, eight, nine children and really don't have a, have a choice, you know, um, to pursue careers, to pursue a hobby. Um, not, not that there's anything wrong with living, you know, for your family and for your children. But, you know, I, I wish also that they could have also choices, you know, to see what's out there. So it, 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 that it means uh, sila yung walang choice or that's the only thing that they've got or they are simply not given opportunity to choose? Um, um, I'll, cite, I'll cite an example, uh, perhaps. You know, um, when we were in, when we did a program in Quezon City and I remember meeting the women for the first time and when I met one of them, um, she was pregnant and I asked, um, so uh, how many children do you have? And she said, this is my ninth and I was just thinking she's very young, you know, um, to have nine, sh- to have uh, eight children and one, another one on the way. I guess, you know, um, she, unable to finish school, um, unable, to, of course, to, to, to apply for a job because really all her kids, I know, one, one year apart from each other. And, and that, those are the programs that we do. We allow them to dream. We, 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 we are able to do trainings like Lipad Pinay and tell them that they can be economically empowered to earn, to have um, to have the opportunity to buy things for themselves. Mm-hmm. But what, uh, does she have a, a husband or she lang? Solo, so, solo pa siya dun sa siyam na yon or sa walo? Um, she, has, she has a husband. She has a husband. Um, you know, um, when we first started working with her, it was very easy to do the baselines because she was earning um, zero pesos, zero. So it's very wow. easy to, to yeah, it's very easy to to really check how the how the program has affected her, and um, you know, little by little, from earning zero to four hundred a week to two thousand a month and onwards, and then you realize some things. They're very thankful because for the first time in their lives they're able to buy lotion, lipstick. And you know, Loy, these are things we take for granted. Lipstick and lotion. And the mm-hmm. fact that she didn't have to ask her husband to buy it for her is a very big deal for her. Okay, so in your particular experience, who are the husbands? Where are the men in all of this? I mean, the scenarios that you're mostly uh, uh, getting into. 
like dito sa case na ito na meron siyang walo tapos one in, uh, on the way so nasan yung husband dito well the husband um works um not earning enough so basically the the amount that they have for you know for everyday um subsistence is just enough uh for the family you know for 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 their food uh for their utilities and that's really the reality for them on the ground okay and then dito ba sa program na ito pag in-empower mo ang women kasama supposed to be in-empower niyo na rin yung men and maybe try to uh try to make both of them involved in whatever it is that you are doing as a program uh yes because um uh, allow me to cite an example like you know um nanay leila from from basilan uh who we worked with um you know when we met nanay leila uh we i met her in zamboanga and when for when the first time i met her um this is in 2018 in september of 2018 um when i talked to her she was shaking i was wondering why she was scared and then i realized the reason why she was scared was it was the first time she had left Basilan to go to Zamboanga. First time on a plane, first time to leave her family, first time to leave her home. And um, earning very little, but through the program was able to do a, a business in, in weaving and earning 22,000 from, from earning... Um, from earning 700 a week to earning 22,000 a month. You know, I always, Melinda Gates has a saying, I, I can't remember it um, in Toto, but something about when you empower women, you you empower, you know, the world. And when you empower women, you empower the men as well. Because um, what happens is the family really gets affected. Like in the case of Nanay Leila, first time she's opened a bank account, first time she even stepped, on, stepped into a bank. And uh, more importantly, child, all three children are in school uh tuition fully paid and a better life for the not just for her but for the entire family mm-hmm. and for sure mas marami ko pa example na masasayad but in the meantime i'm going to pause for a short commercial and then when we come back we're still going to continue our discussion about women empowerment and what spark philippines is doing to help our filipina or philippine women don't go away we'll be right back please stay in our stream Welcome back. You're still watching The Big Picture on TNC. Before we call in back to the studio, our guest again for tonight, I would like to invite you to watch our other inspirational shows on TNC. We have uh, a great lineup of shows for you to choose from. There's always one show, at least for everybody. U-Turn, 
TNC The Talk, Us and Day, The Home Buyer, The Puppet Stories, The Big Picture, of course, The Millennial Voice, Foreign Affairs, HR Hotline, Well Home, Uplift, Market Leader, Metal Shift, Man and More, Cybernext, Healthline, Couple Goals, After Shift, YOLO, Negotiate at Home, TechQ, TNC Marketplace, Danny Art Show, Women at Work, COVID Stories, The Family Business, Usapang Beauty, The Fort Project, With Within, TNC Town Hall, and TNC One Day. And premiering today is TNC PressCon, kung saan po nandun natin TNC co-founder Apple Manansala and the TNC Marketplace uh, co-host Ange Kabukit. So, Again, let's call in back to the studio our guest for tonight. Mike Hatteves is Executive Director of Spark Philippines. Thank you so much again, ma'am, for uh, coming to the uh, show. Yes, thank you for having me again. Yes. Right. Interesting, ano, yung pinag-uusapan natin still, women empowerment, six years and so many stories. What's the most notable story uh, na maaalala mo at mabibigay mo? right on the spot kapag ka tinanong ka ano yung pinakapaborito mo because I, I know there are a lot ano yung pinakapaborito mong story pinaka-touching probably that you've experienced or heard uh, in the past six years I think the most uh, the my most memorable um, experience in Spark was you know prior to working for Spark I'd never even been to Mindanao not, not a single area in Mindanao uh, my very first trip to Mindanao was a trip to Marawi City and um, this was right after the siege. Um, we wanted to do a program, but you know, I really wanted to do um, environmental scanning and see what was the, the situation on the ground. I visited so many evacuation centers and uh, there was one evacuation center I went to. I went around, um, I spoke to different uh, women, uh, and, but there was one uh, woman who called me into her little uh, her little, I can't even say it's a room because it's under a gymnasium and they're divided by tarpaulins or, or rice sacks. And she asked me to join her and to talk to her. And normally I don't eat anything or I don't drink anything when I'm in the field because I have a very weak stomach. But there she offered me a cup of coffee and she opened a pack of Sky Flakes and shared it with me as we talked. And I think at that moment, my heart was breaking because the fact that she had lost everything in her life and that she was living in an evacuation center, yet here she was offering coffee and offering half of her sky flakes to a stranger. And it was there that I knew in my heart that we really had to do a program in Marawi despite all the difficulties and despite the fact that um, we didn't really have program, program funds to launch it. Mm-hmm. Pag sinabi yung, uh, uh, yung economic uh, part or challenges sa, sa women, is it uh, because of the society in general or simply because yung kanya counterpart na men or uh, male, uh, siya yung kumbaga may kakulangan dun sa isang situation? I mean, I, I don't want it to generalize, but in your experience, in most cases, is it uh, biktima ba sila no? uh, uh, problema natin sa society or biktima sila nung isang particular situation kung saan maybe they're able they, they, they chose their a wrong partner or some some sort well it's you know for every for every woman it's very it's always very different every uh, circumstance is very different when you go to um, the rural areas many of them their challenges are that um, they have not gotten um, enough education because most of the time um, it, it's it's the boys and the men who are really sent to school because um, you'll hear words from the parents saying, anyway, mag-aasawa ka lang naman. Hanggang um, ngayon, ma- sorry ha, hanggang ngayon, as in, nangyayari yan, kasi feeling ko, matagal, matagal no nangyari yan, pero hanggang ngayon, pala may ganyan sa countryside. Yes, that's still the reality on the ground. Mer- that that nagi exist pa rin yan. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, and, and uh, also in, in the workplace, um, some women opt not to, not to want to get promotions because you know they don't want to take on more roles um, because they have so many things you know to think about you know their their roles as a mother, as a homemaker, as as a wife. Um, it's I wouldn't say um, it is the the fault of men 
because that would be unfair because many times it's also women who who don't believe in themselves and many times i encounter that um many women who don't uh believe in themselves and i'm talking about different stratas uh um from all walks of life and really it's really the lack of self confidence and yung lack of self confidence parang outcome na lang siya no kagaya ng sinasabi niyo po kanina na in the countryside women are being looked down to parang ganun na parang mag-aasawa ka rin lang so huwag ka na mag-aral pa unahin mo na itong lalaki uh, ganun po ba yun parang outcome siya yung lack or less self confidence ng ating kababaihan yes and many times also they get married very early um i've seen uh women who when i ask when we when we talk to them they get, they got married at age 17 at age 18 So many times you know um we're not able to complete um you know a college education sometimes not even a tertiary education and that's that's so common um amongst many women but you know when you talk about self confidence you know Lloyd um I'm not a very good public speaker but um 6 years ago um prior to 6 years ago I hated talking um in 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 public I wouldn't even do like interviews like this one um I remember my boss uh, Vicky she asked me Michael what can you do and I told her you know hindi naman ako mapili sa trabaho Miss Vicky you can you can um gi- you can ta- give me any task the only thing I ask is please don't make me speak in public or in front of people because I really don't like that and <laughs> not, my, not, not too many people like it really <laughs> yes and uh, yes and on my very first day of work and she said okay she said that and then she said Michael can you come in front Can you give the talk? And I looked at her and you know at that moment I thought I really second guess. I said I specifically told her that I do not want to speak in public, but that's what she did. And many of our women, it's you know, um we have a part in our program where we t- teach them how to pitch. They pitch their businesses, they pitch their their stories, their dreams. And many times they want to back out kasi hindi nila kaya to talk, you know, in public or around people. Mm-hmm. And and that that often happens it's mm-hmm. it's so basic as it's just as basic as that i can only imagine parang sinabi siguro ni Ma'am Vicky na parang yeah you're entitled to your own opinion but it, at the end of the day i'm the boss so speak in front <laughs> parang ganun nangyari but re- really it's, it's it's because yung ano nga yun parang siguro yung main time yung pagtingin nila sa sarili nila uh, na parang they are second class citizens sa isang bansa so nadidevelop nang nadidevelop yun And then, kung ang society mo as ang perception pa din, especially in the countryside, is ang mga kababaihan ay hindi dapat sa ginagawa ng mga kalalakihan. And then, siguro nandun, nandun yung gap. So, in your particular experience dun sa six years, are we closing the gap dun sa gender inequality uh, na sinasabi natin? Um, I would say no, <laughs> because no country has achieved uh, gender equality, genuine gender equality. Um, it's still it's still um, out of our hands. Um, we have not yet we have yet to grasp it. However, I do see many um, initiatives, programs, projects, advocacies that are being run, and um, it's inspiring um, not just in the Philippines but but you know all over the world. Um, I'm I'm seeing a lot of of women um, you know challenge the status quo. Sige man pero ano ito ano parang may batas tayo tapos pero tayong special month for women para sa education awareness information campaign. So ano pa yung gagawin natin para mapabilis ito because it seems like we are running uh, out of time or we are racing against time. Um na parang syempre yung population explosion mabilis eh so padami nang padami. And uh, but, but then again parang sinasabi natin na hindi nagiging close and in, in many other countries same yung case. Ano sa tingin mo yung yung mas kailangan pa natin gawin despite dun sa intervention ng, ng government for example to legislate uh, legislate something na uh, makakatulong dito sa sinasabi natin women empowerment yes well um i i feel that we need to to make more you know we have the magna carta of of women and the magna carta of women is 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 a is, is an made it, it's a amazing uh, legislation i laud Uh, the many women who who, who worked on it, um, I do feel um, that there need there needs to be more. Um, 
along with other other women, we've had roundtable discussions wherein we want to put um, uh, a Magna Carta for rural women, and that's one thing that we that we want to do. Ah, okay. So in other words, para yung need pala, I mean, you're talking about yung Magna Carta for Women, ano? Ibig sabihin yung nagawang ito is parang hindi specific na address yung needs ng mga rural women pa pala. Parang ganun yung naging case. Yes, especially women um in the agricultural sector. Mm. So ano, very specific yung, yung uh, nakita nyo na hindi akma or hindi na address yung concern ng r- rural women dito sa Magna, Magna Carta for Women. Yes. Um, well, one of course in the agricultural sector. That's one of the things that 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 we've really um, started to to um, advocate for. Um, last, we don't do too many um, programs on agriculture, but last year, uh, you know, we really made um, we really made a conscious effort, especially because in the time of COVID. We saw. Uh, we were inspired. You know, um, I have to. I have to give a shout out to my to my friends, um, uh, uh, Cherry Atilano and Dalare Shpola, who are you know big names in agriculture and working with with farmers. And that has inspired us to work with women in communities. Um, many of our projects are now geared uh, for uh, like uh, communal gardens, um, um, things that will give uh, women in the rural areas also. Uh, uh, a chance, you know, and at the same time solving the problem also of food security. Okay, so I'm going to pause for a short commercial, uh, but before that, I'm going to leave you with one question. Um, uh, I think there's a law that says the government, at least the government, ano, uh, you 10% na tala existing budget should be allocated dun sa gender and development. Um, I'm going to ask you the question, is it being utilized or how effective you think it is? as far as your observation is concerned. So don't go away, ladies and gentlemen, because the big picture on TNC will be right back. Please stay on our stream. Welcome back. You're still watching The Big Picture on TNC tonight. Is the Executive Director of uh, Spark Philippines. Uh, Maika Tevez is here with us. All right. Welcome to the show again, ma'am. So, question ko kanina is, my government funding, napakaraming uh, initiative tungkol dito sa gender and development. Uh, I'm sure kasama dito yung uh, women empowerment. How do you think are we uh, faring as far as it is concerned? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. There's a five percent uh, uh, budget allocation uh, for every government aid for every government office agency line agencies. You're, you're right. Um, do do I feel that it's um, properly utilized? Um, I wish I could answer in the affirmative. Um, however, the realities on the ground is that you know many times um, you know a lot of people might disagree with me. I don't think Zumba is bad. But a lot of funds are being used for Zumba classes. Uh, many times, um, they have an activity and they invite a female speaker. And as long as the female the female speaker is able to talk about women empowerment, they can they can check it as a for gender and development. However, yeah. you know um, this this is not the case. Um, you know um, this should be spent properly and uh, for really programs and projects 
that are sustainable. Yeah, and with a real outcome. I mean, for sure, Zumba is okay again. But then again, kung isang beses lang siya nangyari and then you 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 check it na, okay, done, tapos na. Malaki yun, mami. I mean, 5% ng, uh, sa, sa total allocation, I think it's it's huge, right? It is, it is. Um, but you know, I but I also have to say that hindi naman all. You know, there's always an exception to the rule. You have um, you have agencies like Pag Ibig Fund. I really love Pag Ibig Fund. They have mainstream uh, gender development into their programs, projects, and activities. You have local chief executives like Mayor Joy Belmonte of Quezon City, who I who I see has really used her gender and development a budget. Um, excellently so i mean there are also positive stories uh to to get also mm. merong bang gender and development officers sa mga government agencies for example as far as you know o walang naka-designate doon kung sino lang yung local chief executives or kung sino head ng women committee sa isang uh, locality um yes uh, all offices have have a uh, gender and development focal person so there's a focal person that 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 leads, um, um, of course, the programs and projects. But you know, um, at the end of the day, it you really need a strong uh, leader at the helm to to support those programs so that they're, they're really realized. Because many times um, you have God focal persons uh, who create programs, but if there is no support um, from you know from the leadership, then many times um, these programs are not realized. Oh, very good. Okay. So exciting. Pag-usapan natin yung mangyayari sa March. Um, uh, you're going to have your program. It's a, it's a series, I, I understand. Uh, can you tell us something about it? Yes. Uh, so uh, every year, uh, every year we do a women's summit. Uh, we started in 2019 and we had another one in 2020. In 2019, we partnered with the Office of the Vice President uh, as well as different diplomatic missions. In 2020, uh, uh, we partnered with UN Women Asia and the Pacific, and you know this year, um, just because a pandemic is 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 around us, it doesn't mean that we, you know, the advocacy has to stop. And and we at Spark felt that we needed to do this for this for the third straight year. Um, we're very we're very grateful. Um, we're this year we're in uh, where we've partnered with U.S. Embassy Manila, the embassies of Austria, Britain, Czech Republic, um, France, Germany the Netherlands, and, and Sweden, and of course, many other organizations, very esteemed organizations who saw um, uh, our vision. And we're very grateful. Uh, you know, as you mentioned er earlier in the show, uh, we were supposed to do a four-part series, but now it looks like it's going to be seven all in all. But the main oh. components, yes, but the main components are, of course, on March 8th is for International Women's Day, we're doing... Um, uh, women, uh, women, you know, in the time of COVID, um, looking at pre-COVID, during COVID, and what are they hopeful for? Uh, for You're the second, in mm -mm. You go ahead, go ahead. For the second installment, we're doing women and diversity because we have to acknowledge that women come in all forms. You know, the women have different sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression. And now, you know, it's the time uh, for us. Um, to really um, recognize them, um, uh, to talk about their challenges and 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 um, problems, and uh, for the third on March 22, we're doing women in governance because you know um, it's 2022 is a election year, and now is the time to talk about women's political participation. Um, and also how men or male counterparts can push for the women's agenda. And of course, the last but certainly not the least is women and, and feminine health because, you know, health is a very important subject, especially uh, at this time. Oh, I can only imagine no, yung 2020 kung ano yung naging role ng kababayan sa ating mga tahanan, di ba ma'am? I mean, <laughs> dito talaga na-highlight yun kasi sila talaga yung caretaker eh, dito sa, sa bawat tahanan natin. So, interesting yun na, especially dito sa sinasabi nyo economic challenges, ano, kung for example, natigil yung lalaki sa pagtatrabaho, so yung yung kababaihan ay they are not uh, economically sound as well so yun yung mga isa sa mga challenges na nakikita ko especially na nung nagkaroon ng lockdown and uh, uh, it, it's something na magiging interested ako na malaman dun sa women during uh, covid 
Oo, sana ma-update ako doon. And uh, maybe in some other time, pwede natin pag-usapan uli yan after the uh, summit. If we can have you again on TNC, definitely we'll be happy to, uh, uh, to, to get some updates from you. Yes. Okay, sige ma'am. Final question before I let you go. Um, what do you think is the big picture Consider all things that are happening right now, and as far as your organization, Spark Philippines, is concerned. Ano yung big picture dito sa scenario natin ngayon? For me, the big picture is really uh, looking looking beyond COVID. Um, 2020, uh, you know, was a very difficult year um, for many people, uh, me included. Um, our women... Uh, went through a lot. Their businesses were either shut down, um, but many of them learned to pivot and, you know, to be resilient. I think the big the big picture for me is to, to for us, not just to be resilient, but for us to empower one another. Um, not, you know, you mentioned the men, not just empowering women. I am in the business of women empowerment, but also empower our male counterparts. Um, now is the time for us to all, you know, um, rebuild, uh, to, to stand up again and, um, that's the important part now for, for us to, to be there for one another and, you know, to help each other out. All right. So where did do, where do they get in touch with you, ma'am? Meron ka bang social media kung saan sila pwedeng mag-register or sumali dito sa mga programs niya or website? Yes. Um, so our Facebook page is Spark Philippines. You can follow us at Spark Philippines to get updates. Um, we will be posting um, our, our the, the links, the registration links to, to our events. Um, do follow us. Um, we are. We will be doing um, a number of talks. You know, as Lloyd. Aside from what I told you, the, the four the four events. We're also launching the Grow Her Initiative in the Philippines. Um, you know, with our partner Agrea. We will also be doing a, a women um, a film for women, which I'm very excited about. And this is in collaboration with amazing filmmaker Laika Gonzalez, and um, and many more. Um, we we in together with um unfpa and usaid um we hope that we can uh discuss the issues of um the inequity of of uh the inequity of gender uh response uh to, to covid um those are just one of the, the things that that uh we hope to do um this month all right thank you so much uh ma'am maika please continue uh what you have been doing because you are changing the world Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I hope to meet you in person. Oh, definitely we will. <laughs> definitely we will one of these days. Thank you so much again, madam. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank all you. right. That's all the time that we have for tonight. I would like to thank uh, those who have watched our episodes for tonight and those who are watching replay. Thank you so much for your time. We'd like to thank uh, Puzzle Box BPO Inc., our presenter. Also sponsored uh, uh, by um, Unisol. Aliaga, Mr. Rice, Rice Supply, and Well Life Philippines. So I want to see you again tomorrow for another inspirational episode of The Big Picture. In the meantime, I would have to say bye-bye and good night.